why children of color are so perplexed, and how we can end this trend of minority youth being seen as reluctant or troublesome. I see three places where these are key elements, media, schools, and actions and responses in society. First, we have media. The four you are a series of images, and they all have many commonalities. One you all probably see right off the bat is these are all shows directed at children of varying ages. But another commonality is each of these shows only have two characters of color max. As we go on from here, we see that this is often called a token character. Um, if any of you have seen South Park, the only black character's name is literally token black. I mean, imagine yourself. This is what I would call a commonality that is a gateway to societal placement confusion. All imagine yourself watching your favorite show, and there's one person that looks like you, but that one person looks very different from everyone else who looks very similar. It's almost as if you were an outlier, and I mean in math, we're told to take the outliers out. Now, this may not directly be math, and it may not seem like a problem now, but it can lead to problems in the future. To elaborate, let's look at princesses. These are the original eight, and five out of eight of them are white. And as the years go on, we are able to solidify six more princesses. Rapunzel, Tiana, Merida, Anna and Elsa, and the newest addition I am very excited for is Moana. Now, with these additions, we are at a whopping five princesses of color or non-European descent. And if we compare their demographics to world demographics, we can see that it does not add up. There is elaboration on the white race with nationalities and diversity, but with every other race, there is only one representative for each child. This is a problem. And if trends of princess applications and if the demographics grow how they are supposed to, this difference will grow even more great and become more of a problem for children in the future. Now, I'm not saying children can only look up to people who look like them, but for the crucial learning ages of zero to five, this is, and for those who do, this option is being either knocked down or taken away. So we've all heard of roles that were once white characters that are now implementing characters of color. Spider-Man, The Torch, Annie, you know. Well, the responses to these have actually been quite sickening. One that I've heard is it will alter the whole storyline if the character changes race. I don't know how a black, black man or a white man both being bit by a spider in New York and mutating and shooting webs from their hands is different, but to some it really is. But the one that stuck out to me the most was that if fans say that if a character changes from white to black, they will no longer be able to identify with said superhero. Now I found this very interesting. Young adults to adults are worrying about their representation in a character that is directed towards children. And, however, when it's the reverse, a white character in a non-white -white role, the same, not as much debate has been um, talked about. Especially, and even when, some of these characters you see before you are culturally historical figures. But, what is the difference? What is the difference between the Spider-Man change and these changes? Well, when a character is put in a role that gives representation to an underrepresented group, especially children, it shows these children that there isn't a default race. That who they are can't be created in a makeup chair with latex over eyes, darker foundation, or taught to an actor or actress, but then stereotypically butchered anyway. I mean, we see this all the time. Back to Spider-Man. Spider-Man plus white equals Spider-Man, but suddenly when it's Spider-Man plus black, he is now a black Spider-Man. It shouldn't be one way for one and not for the other. White is not the default race. And if we stop seeing Caucasian as the default race, I feel like we could fix many of the societal placement confusion problems that we see nowadays. So, I faced one of these problems at my own school of underrepresentation. So it was a few weeks prior to Women's Day at our school, and the library had hung up a bunch of women's first. And I loved the idea and the concept, except out of the 20-some women on that wall, there was only two women of color up there. And it made me wonder why these wonderful women didn't make the cut. However, when I asked my librarian about this, they got very offended. And I wanted them to know that I didn't believe that a certain woman shouldn't be up there over another. And I didn't want any to be taken down. 
I was just wondering why we couldn't add on more inclusion, more diversity, especially for girls at my school that sometimes need another perspective to see someone like them out there doing good things. Uh, and this event, it did upset me, but it also shows that schools impact our lives as youth in and out of the classroom. And they should know this. One story we probably all heard, the young boy, Amin Mohammed, 14 years old, Texas. He was arrested for bringing a homemade clock to school and assumption that it was a bomb. Stereotypically, we know why. We don't agree, but we know why this outlandish yet specific assumption was made. However, statistics don't. Studies posted in the New York Times, Huffington Post, and Daily Beast, to name a few, have not only stated that 74% of law enforcement worry more about right-winged groups more than jihadist groups, but also 65% of terror attacks post 9-11 have been committed by said right-winged groups and white supremacist groups. White supremacist groups. Now, what does this all mean? Well, to summarize it, this school has basically shown that it is okay to jump to stereotypical conclusions. Schools who, schools who do this or simply call racism bullying need to realize the futures they breed. Stere, stere, socially uneducated, stereotypically driven, confused kids turn adults. And sadly, this in turn will feed institutionalized and societal racial profiling. How come extra precaution isn't taken when a white teen male enters a secondary school? When studies done, by psychologist Dr. Steve, Dr. Peter Lambert, um, specialist in school shootings, has even stated that 79% of that demographic has committed school shootings in these areas. Well, this internalized saying comes to mind. We should not judge a book by its cover. And I think this should especially go for a book whose cover has been illustrated and binded with outdated and biased statistics or heinous actions done by radical or extremist groups. We need to stop seeing children as statistics and we need to see them as human beings and so they can know that they have possibilities outside of a realm that is shown to them. So that's why change needs to happen today with all of us. We need to help find and recognize positive representation in society for our youth. We need to let them know that they don't need to adapt to a white world or society. We need to, we need to let them know that who they are doesn't need to be sufficed with one or two token characters we need to stop using their cultures as costumes. Fictionally or unfictionally, we need to fix this problem of underrepresentation now so a kid's present and future don't need to worry about how they can be different, but rather how they can make a difference. We all have one future we're going to live in. So how are you going to help shape it? Thank you.